chief physician in attendance at ringside this evening is Dr. Frank S. Folk, along with his two fine colleagues, Dr. Billy Lathan and Dr. Richard Estrico. The judges for this title bout, Larry O'Connell from England, Bob Locus of Belgium, and Sid Nathan of England. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 12 round junior lightweight title bout, referee Richard Steele of the state of Nevada. And now my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the white trim. He tipped in at 128 and three quarter pounds. This gentleman has 27 wins, six losses with 14 knockouts. A native of Guayama, Puerto Rico, and now residing in Brooklyn, New York, and the former World Boxing Council featherweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, here is one Laporte. Laporte. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with the gold trim. He weighed in at an even 129 pounds. This young man is undefeated in 51 professional bouts with 45 knockouts. All the way from Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. Boxing fans, here is the champion, Julio Cesar Chavez. All right, so Richard Steele calls him to the center of the ring. Okay, I gave both fighters their instructions in the dressing room. I would like to caution them now to obey my commands at all times. Is there any questions? Shake hands and good luck. All right, we're all set to go. This is a 12-round WBC World Super Featherweight Championship. Julio Cesar Chavez and Juan Laporte. You see the tail of the tape there for a second. And the height difference, uh, a couple of inches in advantage to Julio Cesar Chavez. He weighs a quarter pound less. He's three years younger. And he's giving away an inch and a half in reach. Juan Laporte, the former featherweight champion of the world. He's had six world title fights. Losses include Salvador Sanchez, Vesuvio Pedroza, and he lost his WBC featherweight title to Wilfredo Gomez at March of 84. He retained the title twice after defeating Mario Miranda in September of 82 by defeating Johnny De La Rosa and Ruben Castillo. Julio Cesar Chavez, 50-0, 45 knockouts. This is his ninth title defense since winning his title back in September of 1984. Started fighting at age 16, had 15 amateur fights, then turned pro. He's a good one. He's a great one, a great little champion. This is the 130-pound limit, super featherweight, a junior lightweight championship. Two excellent boxers. And you have to say that Chavez is a pretty good puncher when he has 45 KOs to his record. Laporte, with 27 wins, has only 14 knockouts, but an excellent boxer as well. So the pride of Puerto Rico and Laporte, and the pride of Calucan, Mexico, and Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez in the blue trunks, Juan Laporte in the red trunks. This fight is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council and the New York State Athletic Commission. 10-point must-scoring system, meaning the winner of the round gets 10 points, the loser 9 11 The three-knockdown rule has been waived for this title fight. The fighter must get up following a low blow, he may be counted out. There's a mandatory eight-count following knockdowns, and a fighter could not be saved by the bell except for the final round, but of course the bell signifies the end of the fight. Scoring done by three judges. The referee has no say. And of an even first round, a difficult round to score. Laporte seems to be trying to go to the body with the left hook. Richard Steele warns him about pushing. It's Laporte in the red trunks. Julio Cesar Chavez in the blue and gold. 
but his trade jabs. Chavez gets through with the right hand lead and Laporte tries to bounce a few shots. Shots off him and nails him with the right hand. Right hand lead by Laporte. Chavez is so sneaky inside, he's so quick inside. Very even first round. It's Emil Griffith. Also, Carlos Espada in there. Let's listen. Give me the Vaseline, Victor. Watch this. You see the uppercut by Chavez, the right hand, answered by one Laporte. Same thing, another angle of it. Bang, that right hand. So Laporte looked like he got through with the heavier blows. It's Emil Griffith working on Juan Laporte. Coming up to round number two, I'm Bob Sheridan. Glad that you can be with us. The dynamic duo presenting this of Butch King and of course Don King. Juan Laporte in the red trunks, Julio Cesar Chavez in the blue and gold. This is round two, nice uppercut scored by Laporte. Port does such a great job of recovering every he throws that right hand. Most guys, if they throw a real, real strong right hand, they're kind of left with their chin hanging out, and that's not the case with Laporte. Laporte forcing the fight right now. And as they say, that Chavez comes at him. And again, Richard Steele, the third man in the ring, wants Laporte, who looks much stronger than Julio Cesar Chavez. Actually, Chavez is a quarter pound heavier than is Laporte. Laporte, no stranger to world title fights, and certainly now Julio Cesar Chavez in his 10th world title fight. This is his ninth title defense. Left hook scores. Richard Steele warning Laporte about keeping the punches up. Chavez bounces the left off the head. That's the midway mark in round two. Difficult fight to score thus far. First round, frankly, dead even. Both guys have showed flashes at different times in the fight. Inside, it seems like Chavez does the scoring. And when they back off a bit, it seems like Laporte does the scoring. Put your hand. continues the way this is going an excellent boxing match it's going to be really tough to score we've got to look for the fine things to see who's getting the edge here at least in these first two rounds at this stage it looks like Chavez is getting the best of round number two and as I say that Laporte answers with a couple of good shots Good round for Chavez. All right, as we look at the tail of the tape, you see that Julio Cesar Chavez is a couple of inches taller, which is probably the most important thing. There's only a quarter pound difference in weight. The age really no factor because they're both in their prime, although you see that uh, Julio Cesar Chavez is three years younger. And the reach difference, an inch and a half 
in favor of Juan Laporte. So a very even couple of guys here with the exception of the height. And thus far, it doesn't seem like Julio Cesar Chavez has taken advantage of the height advantage uh, whatsoever. And Juan Laporte, you would think, would have more experience, but he doesn't have as many fights with his 27 years as does Julio Cesar Chavez at 24. So you can throw the tail of the tape out. These guys are pretty evenly matched right down the line with the exception of the height. All right, here we go with round number three. Laporte gets the first one through. I thought Chavez may have won that second round by the fact that I thought he landed more punches. Laporte may have landed heavier blows, so that's a very subjective uh, way that different uh, officials may score that round. I thought round one was dead even. Real good right hand by Laporte. Laporte a little bit puffy beneath the left eye. Both fighters in magnificent shape this fight. Both fighters real good pros. Now the first minute of this round has been won by Laporte. He was kind of doing a little bit of dip to try and slip a punch, and he had bounced right in the head by Chavez. I mentioned that scoring by minutes so you could see the difficulty that judges might be having in scoring this fight because it's very, very close. Both guys are so slick. They can do so many things so well. But thus far in the round, I think Laporte is a clear winner of this round as I thought Chavez won the last round, but it's so difficult to score when you get such excellent boxes and nothing really big happening, but both guys landing different punches at different times. Again, the only mark on the face of Laporte is a mouse beneath the left eye, and Chavez has a cut like on the bridge of his nose, or maybe just an abrasion. Round three by the boards. Good round for Juan Laporte. Again, as we look into the corner now of Julio Cesar Chavez, if you take a look at his record, so far this year, in March, he retained his title against Roberto Lindo in May, against Faustino Barrios in Paris. He defeated Refugio Rojas. As we take a look at the eye of Juan Laporte. No, you're good there now. You're getting weak. You're good And we'll show you how it happened. But it's showing you a little bit how Chavez's abrasion across his nose occurred. Also in June of this year, Chavez defeated Refugio Rojas. Rocky Lockridge in uh, August was his victim. So he's had a real good year defending his title four times. He defended it four times last year as well. Against Johnny Bumpus, Dwight Pratchett, Roger Mayweather, Ruben Castillo. He also knocked out Manny Hernandez in an untitled fight. This is round four, scheduled for 12. At stake, the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship. 
Juan Laporte, the red trunks, and the champion Julio Cesar Chavez in the blue and gold trunks. Laporte, of course, the former featherweight champion of the world, who lost his title to Wilfredo Gomez in March of 1984 with a 12-round decision. I thought the first round was too even to call. I thought Chavez won the second round. I thought Laporte won the third round. And now Richard Steele gives another warning. This round, both guys seem to be closing a little bit more. Maybe trying to get a second win. It's shot by Chavez in the midsection. Nice combination by Laporte. As I look closer at that nose of Julio Cesar Chavez, it looks to be just an abrasion across the bridge of his nose. The port's got a nice mouse coming up underneath that, that left eye. It could be a factor later on. The port got the best of that combination inside. Chavez is so under control and his punches are so crisp. And he's such a disciplined boxer. Does a nice job slipping on what could have been a knockout punch by Laporte. Just stays right out of the reach of him. Knows about positioning, knows about timing, knows about slipping those punches. Chavez a great little champion. Laporte a great challenger. And a former featherweight champion. Don't push, don't push. Let's listen. Here, here we go. I want to drop the right hand in his chest. Well, show the right hand. Drop the right hand and walk after it. And then still don't don't lose don't lose confidence. You're doing good. You're doing very good. Wait. You're doing very good. Hold. All right, we show you this replay. Laporte working downstairs. And then Chavez comes up and nails him with a left hook, and he takes a right hand himself. But notice the way his body was moving away. His body started to move. That's what I was talking about when I say he, he does such an excellent job of slipping punches, moving away, knows exactly where he is, positioning his feet and body at all times, so he doesn't take the full brunt of punches. As, as I mentioned, Laporte in the early going looks stronger as we come up to round five. Sheridan coming to you live from Madison Square Garden in New York City. Ooh, a right hand scored that time. Again, his head was moving away, so he didn't take the full brunt of it. Watch your head, watch your head. Richard Steele, the referee, warns him out watching the heads. A punch thrown by Laporte. You know, looked really, really heavy. But again, Chavez had the head moving away, trying to get away from the power of it, and he was able to do it, because if that had caught him flush, he'd have gone down. Nice left hook of his own scores. I think that's what Chavez has got to do, is throw more right hands. He's got a nice bruise underneath that left eye of Juan Laporte. He's such a patient, disciplined fighter. He can seemingly do whatever he wants to do at any time. He pokes in between the gloves that time of Laporte. Laporte looks almost frustrated that he can't knock this guy down. And you heard Emil Griffith say it in between rounds, don't lose confidence, don't lose confidence. You're doing fine. And he is doing fine. It's a very close fight. A 
Again, while it looks like Chavez is scoring more punches, Laporte is scoring heavier punches. Cesar Chavez has plenty of respect for Laporte. Chavez will jab with that left or lead with the right hand. He'll do so many things. He attacks the body, comes back upstairs. And Laporte, another one of those fine, fine Puerto Rican fighters. And so many good ones down there. See Carlos Sugar De Leon, the cruiserweight champion of the world, sitting over here in the crowd. Wanted me to say hello to all the people down in Puerto Rico that I know are watching. Inside of 15 seconds to go in the round. you people watching around the world I know in Mexico it's a little bit easier for you to score for Chavez as it is in Puerto Rico to score for Juan Laporte but trying to be objective here I really I hate to give even rounds and scoring and I find the first the fourth and the fifth even rounds with Chavez winning the second and Laporte winning the third I've got a dead even fight to here we your children right here. Come back with your left hook. That's Emil Griffith talking you. to Juan Laporte. Okay, hold it. With your children right here, come back with your left hook. Do it. Come on, baby. Show them that right come hand on. and then hook off it hard. All right. All right, this is round number six. Getting into the area now where conditioning can begin to show, but both of these fellows have been the distance so many times. Actually, Chavez with the distance in his last title defense against Rocky Lockridge, but hadn't been the distance in a long time since then. Seven rounds against Refugio Rojas, five against Barrios, two against Lindo, five against Johnny Bumpus, 12 against Dwight Pratchett, and that goes back to September of 85. be a better round so far for Julio Cesar Chavez. Have to say he won the first minute of that round. Now Laporte answers right back. Maybe he heard me. Didn't like what he heard. Chavez, followed by the uppercut. The Porter better get busy. He's going to lose this round. Past the midway mark in round six. Oh, oh, oh. This is the first sign of fatigue and first sign of punishment when you see a guy start to hang on. It's the first time either guy is trying to hang on in the fight. I have to say. Cesar Chavez won the second minute of round six, as well as the first. Let's see if Laporte can pick up the pace a little bit. So far, this is the first clear round since I thought Laporte won the third round. A good round for Julio Cesar Chavez thus far. About 40 seconds to go, can Laporte salvage the round? He better get busy. Chavez better get off the ropes, too, or Laporte will tag him. Julio 
she's a showbiz. today for being late for the weigh-in today. But it doesn't seem to affect his attitude in the fight at all. That was the first clearly, real clear round that either fighter has won. I thought that uh, Chavez definitely won that round 10-9. Uh, kind of a lackluster round for Laporte. Laporte finished strong in the round, but not enough to win the round. So Chavez wins two and six. We get Laporte winning three and I hate to say it, but I've got the rest of them even. I had the fight dead even going to the sixth round, and Chavez clearly winning the sixth, so only a point separates this guy. Look at this flurry here at the end of the round. Not really indicative of what happened in most of the round, and then the bell sounds here as Richard Steele steps in. But that flurry wouldn't win the round for Laporte. A point separates this fight one way or the other. Very, very close as we go to the second half. This is round number seven. Let's see if Chavez can keep on the attack. Laporte lands the first two, bouncing them off the chin of Julio Cesar Chavez. Those two punches short, as was that one by Chavez. Laporte gets through with the right hand. He should have thrown that right hand instead of fainting with it. Again, Juan Laporte in the red trunks. Julio Cesar Chavez in the blue and gold trunks. Fighters trading punches, but the heavier blows being landed now by Chavez. Earlier in the fight, I thought Laporte was landing the heavier blows, but it's Chavez doing the heavier scoring now. Laporte still seems to be stronger with the exception of that sixth round. It's another one of those very even rounds thus far. We're midway through it, past the midway mark, as you see. Laporte's had that puffiness below the left eye since the second round. Nice right hand, and now Richard Steele moves in and warns him about keeping uh, his hands up. Richard Steele, one of the best referees in the world today, refereeing this fight. He's done many championship fights. Hails from Las Vegas, Nevada, where they have so many great referees. Blood coming from the nose now of Laporte. time now in round number seven another difficult round to score because it seems as though Julio Cesar Chavez landed so many more punches but then towards the closing 20 seconds of the round Laporte wrapped him a couple of real good times so again it's very subjective as to how different judges see a fight and uh, their philosophy in scoring as to how that round would be scored I personally would still give it to Chavez because I think that uh, he landed so many more punches during the fight that he forced it. Other judges could have given it to Laporte. 
¿Y él te dice, quieres que el trato tirar más golpes todo el tiempo? O sea, son 10 segundos para ti. Ah, sí. Sí, sí. No, era son 10 segundos. Ramón Félix. Chapin across the way. Chapin across the way. Chapin across the way. Juan Laporte. Still is that puffiness beneath the left eye and the side of the left eye, but his eyes wide open. Coming from the top right, Juan Laporte. Laporte in the red, Julio Cesar Chavez in the blue and gold, and a very close fight so far. Again, round number eight, scheduled for 12. And again, we're in the area where conditioning begins to tell its toll. Both fighters seem very fresh, plenty of elasticity in the knees, plenty of bounce in those legs. Nice up a punch scored, good body punches scored by Chavez. Porter's got to get a little bit busier. He's going to have some of these rounds taken away from him. Chavez looks the fresher of the two at this stage. Chavez's face really looks unmarked with the exception of a little abrasion across the nose, which happened back around the second and third round. Shove is so totally under control all the time. Went to throw a punch, wasn't in position for it, stopped immediately. If you take a look at the two fighters, you have to say Chavez is winning the fight. to round number nine. Again, scheduled for 12 at stake, the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship. Juan Laporte in the red trunks, Julio Cesar Chavez in the blue trunks. Chavez again looks to me to be the fresher of the two fighters in a very even fight thus far.
Chavez taking command of the first minute of this round. Both of these fellows are in great condition. Looks like Richard Steele has taken one point away. Taken one point away for low blow. All right, that'll probably cost Chavez the round. Unintentional, but nonetheless, he warned him about it before. And I think an excellent way to stop a series of low blows. Even though they're unintentional, as in the Cooney Holmes fight, you remember, they're still a foul. And they should be taking points away. Richard Steele did that, and I think an excellent call by Steele. Now watch Chavez, who will have to really hustle to win this round. He really can't win it unless he knocks the guy down. The best he can do is hope for an even round here. And again, Richard says, keep him up, keep him up. seconds to go in the round. Oh, Laporte nailed him with the right hand. Didn't take much of an effect. Chavez tries to fight back gamely. Laporte. Ahead, if you start 10-9 in favor of Chavez, then you score it 9-9 because you take the point away from Chavez. I thought it was a very even round, and so I would score 10-9 in favor of Laporte based on the fact that uh, Chavez had the point taken away. When you take a look at the wide shot here, Madison Square Garden, New York City, the site. And don't forget, coming up, the World Heavyweight Championship featuring Tim Witherspoon and James Bonecrusher Smith and also Tyrell Biggs, the 1984 Olympic gold medalist in the Super Heavyweight Division against Ronaldo Snipes, a guy that came within a couple of seconds of wrestling the crown away from Larry Holmes in his prime. This is round 10 on a scheduled 12-round WEC World Super Featherweight Championship fight. I'm Bob Sheridan. Glad that you can be with us. The dynamic duo bringing this fight to you, Juan Laporte and Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez in the blue, Juan Laporte in the red. In what is a very, very even fight. the two fighters. I've got it scored Chavez 88, Laporte 87. And Chavez to lose that point in the ninth round could hurt him a lot, depending on how the judges see the fight. Remember, my scoring is only an indication of the way I see it. I'll try and help you folks at home have an idea of the way it might be going. But this one's very, very close. I know the people in Puerto Rico have Laporte ahead, and 
be from Mexico and the man that's doing the damage right now is Javis ahead. Laporte looks the worst for wear. He's had a bloody nose throughout most of the fight. Pretty good puffiness between below the left eye throughout the fight. Chavez visibly unmarked except for a little abrasion across the bridge of his nose. Laporte in the early going looked like he was throwing stronger punches. Good right hand cut Chavez that time but not flush. Nice right hand cut and flush that time though. But it doesn't back Chavez up. It ignites him. If you like boxing, you're going to love this fight because I'm going to tell you, these two fellas are really pros when it comes to boxing. Two rounds to work for me. More in my back. Okay, okay you, got back. you got it. Two rounds to work for me. You know what I mean? Samuel yeah. Griffin two talking to one Two rounds to listen. Put out. But you have moving hands. With these two rounds, Tony, you walk out of here the you champion. Put out to you. You put out to you. Okay? Come on. Dry his gloves, Victor. Come on. Let them punch his shop. You got to put out to you. You got to put out to you. You got championship fights. Later on we have a WBA heavyweight championship fight. Tim Witherspoon and Bone Crusher Smith, which is scheduled for 15. Julio Cesar Chavez in the blue trunks, Juan Laporte in the red trunks, in a very even fight. When Laporte hits Chavez, it seems to ignite him and get him more aggressive. The blood starts to trickle from the nostrils of Juan Laporte once again. His face really kind of a mess because he's got that puffiness below the left eye. Right hand right on that nose again. When you look in Chavez's eyes, you can see he wants to hit that eye just unbelievably under control in a fight. Even when he gets hit, he seems to be under control. No wasted motion, no wasted movement. Great accuracy of punches. Does a great job slipping punches. Laporte getting hit quite a bit more now than he was in the early going of the fight. But each time I say that, Laporte will land a heavy punch, and then you wonder how the officials may be scoring this fight. Again, three international judges doing the scoring. Coming to life as you see the action here. It's like Laporte getting the best of it. These guys are in magnificent shape. The punches they're throwing in this the 11th round. Talk about 
conditioned athletes. These two are the epitome of what a professional athlete should be. Tremendous physical shape. They have this kind of energy this late in the fight. And while it hasn't been this fast and furious, they've thrown a lot of punches throughout. Big, big, big 11th round for both fighters. I think I probably should mention to you the fact that because the fight is so close and Laporte may have won that 11th round, uh, which would make the fight dead even going to the 12th round, if in fact there is a draw, the champion retains the title. And you should know that now. And again, you've heard it so many times, a guy must clearly win to win a championship away from a uh, champion. But when you have the scorecards, the way they're collected, that really doesn't make sense at all. Because if somebody or two guys see Laporte winning the fight, then he wins it, no matter how close it is. Come on, baby. Get the bucket out, Victor. This is the one for you, Tommy. For you. For you, Tony. For you. I've got it scored 107-107. Dead even, going to the 12th and final round. This should be a war. Big part of Laporte turning things around was back in the ninth round when Chavez had a point taken away from him. Oh, big right hand by Laporte. like the beat and fight it by the looks of his face but that isn't how fights are scored neither fighter has been down neither fighter visibly shaken throughout the fight neither fighter has been wobbled or at any time or any time during the fight in any kind of trouble again it's been a lot like this throughout Chavez landing a lot of punches Laporte landing some of the heavier blows in the fight but the face of Juan Laporte looking worse for the wear. Another good right hand landed by Laporte. Chavez answers right back. Laporte looks more fatigued right now. Inside of a minute to go in the fight. Port to the ropes. Inside of 20 seconds now. Blood streaming from the nose of Laporte. There'll be no knockout. What a great finish to a super, super fight. What a great, great fight that was. Two fighters fought their hearts out. I can't tell you the winner of this fight. I've got it scored dead even, 117-117. If that were the case by the judges, that would mean a draw and the champion would retain his title. Oh, yeah. Let's go. One more time. The people, as you can see, in the floor of Madison Square Garden on their feet. 
And as well they should be. These two guys, finely conditioned machines, came in here and battled their hearts out. A super, super fight to watch. Again, unofficially, I haven't scored 117, 117. But we'll have to wait and see how the judges see it. A very, very close fight. I had six rounds that I scored even, and very, very rarely do I score even rounds. I've always made the comment when people ask me, you know, judges are here to score the tough rounds. The people sitting at home watching television can score the easy ones as I can, but there were six rounds where I really couldn't make up my mind. So all I can tell you, in that case, I got to be fair with myself and score it even, even though I don't like to. That's the way I saw them. 117-117, I have it. The three judges will do the official scoring, though, and maybe they can come to a better decision than I did. We'll wait. If you look at the two fighters, Chavez looks the fresher. And Laporte's face is a little beaten up. But that doesn't really mean anything. Ed Darien collecting the scorecards. And we're just waiting for him to collect the scorecards and total them up finally over there with one of the state inspectors. And of course, this under the sanctioning of the World Boxing Council. So there's a World Boxing Council official over there. And now let's try to get up to our ring announcer, Ed Darien, and get the uh, scoring of this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for these two young men. Larry O'Connell of England observed the fight 115 114. Judge Bob Logist of Belgium, he observed it 114 113. And Judge Sid Nathan of England, he scored it 117 112 for the winner by unanimous decision for his 52nd straight win in as many pro bouts and still the World Boxing Council Junior Lightweight Champion Julio Cesar Chavez. Well, I don't Chavez. think the crowd is booing Julio Cesar Chavez so much as that they really hated to see it so unanimously. Actually, there's only a couple of points, 115, 114, 114, 113 by two of the judges. And one of the judges, I don't know what fight he was watching, had at 117, 112. That means he had five rounds. Of course, I had six even rounds, so maybe he made a decision on those. And if he did, he obviously made him in favor of Julio Cesar Chavez. I had a dead even. Two judges had it one point differently for Julio Cesar Chavez. So Julio Cesar Chavez retains the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship by defeating Juan Laporte.